About a month ago, we got the long-awaited release date for the Fallout TV show, which will be dropping on April 12th, 2024. And while the Pip-Boy video to accompany this release date was fun, many fans were confused as to why more of the show wasn't shown here. But thankfully, that all changed today, as Vanity Fair just dropped a complete first look at the Fallout TV show, including some never-before-seen shots, as well as a plethora of story details. And what makes this all so much more interesting is if you take some of these new official set photos and look at some of the past leaked set photos, these paint a very interesting story about what is to come with the Fallout TV show. And first, I want to help you play more video games. Those hectic holidays are right around the corner, but with today's video sponsor, HelloFresh, you can save tons of time on cooking and even get some free breakfast. I always kind of assumed I sucked at cooking, but then I made this. And like, wow, I cooked food that actually tastes good. Because cooking becomes a lot easier when you have all the ingredients pre-portioned and delivered straight to your door with some incredibly easy to follow instructions. And the crazy part is this food didn't just taste good but it only took me 15 minutes to cook. Yeah, HelloFresh has a whole suite of 15 minute meals perfect for this hectic holiday season and there's a reason that HelloFresh is America's number one meal kit. They offer 45 recipes each week and have a ton of add-on options like quick lunches or even breakfast. And if you want to never have to worry about breakfast again, you clicked on the right video as you can get free breakfast for life just by using code POGJUICEFREE at HelloFresh.com. One breakfast item per box while subscription is active. Click the link in the description or scan the QR code with your phone. So right from the get-go, this new article gives us a giant piece of information. We have known that the Fallout TV show will be in Los Angeles and focused on Vault 33, but now we also know it'll be 2296, 219 years after the bombs originally dropped. But of course, this is huge for lore considerations. We'll talk a bit more about that later on, but do note this means the Fallout TV show will be the latest piece of official Fallout content, being nine years after the events of Fallout 4 and well after the events of all of the other games in the franchise. The Fallout TV show is going to be focused around three main characters, but it seems like right off the bat, we're going to be mostly looking at Ella Purnell's character named Lucy. Lucy is a vault dweller in Vault 33, and she's described as a particularly sheltered vault dweller. In another image, we can see her and her dad, who is also the vault overseer named Hank, and the two of them seem to be studying electronics. The writing on the board is about receptors in a series, and we get a great first look at the game-accurate Pip-Boy. We definitely have never seen this Pip-Boy before, and especially not in leaked images. And it seems like as the show begins, Vault 33 will still be closed, which of course is a really long time. Over 200 years since the bombs dropped, this vault is still closed. It described how the inhabitants have been waiting for generations for a day when it's safe to surface, but some kind of crisis forces Lucy to venture above on a rescue mission, which is definitely interesting. From this article, Lucy is portrayed as this innocent girl leaving the vault. And even from this image, it really looks like she has this great relationship with her dad, the Overseer. But in the last officially shared image of the TV show, we can see what looks like Lucy escaping the vault under duress. It looks like there's two guards in shock as to what she's doing, and seemingly there's somebody downed off to the side, seemingly right next to the vault controls. It definitely seems like Lucy is escaping the vault and not just leaving it, but you can start to see the premise here. The show starts off with Lucy, the innocent vault dweller, being thrust into the dangerous waste, and they describe how this will be a world crawling with giant insects, voracious mutant animal abominations, and a human population of sun-baked miscreants. And further, the show will look at Lucy's clash with the people who are left out in the waste just trying to survive. Lucy is likely going to be the first character we see adventuring out into the wasteland because as an audience, you could view things and explain things from her perspective. But in this article, it's described how there's going to be three major characters, and as the story progresses, each of these are going to meet up and intersect into a group. And the next major character introduced is the wannabe soldier Maximus who grew up with the Brotherhood of Steel and is now a squire. A squire is the lowest rank in the Brotherhood of Steel and reserved for non combat menial tasks. And Maximus is another character we have seen before. We can see him here walking up to this vault Tech lab. Specifically, this seems like a lore expansion, a new subsidiary of vault Tech known as Hawthorne Laboratories. So Maximus's initial plotline may be him discovering the dark history of vault Tech and the vault experiments, likely while on some kind of research mission with the Brotherhood of Steel. And of course, from this, we get our first proper look at the Brotherhood of Steel, and notably, this will be the West Coast Brotherhood of Steel. They're described as being fueled by a mutated version of patriotism, religion, 
religion, loyalty, and fraternity. And how in general they're going to be that familiar Brotherhood of Steel that is trying to collect valuable pieces of technology and preserve them for themselves. And looking at this Brotherhood Knight and his assault rifle, this is insanely accurate to Fallout 4. Like, as you could tell from this side-by-side -side comparison, this is an almost perfect recreation of the in-game armor and weapon. But the other two shots of the Brotherhood of Steel are the real hype creators. We can see a new Brotherhood airship, not the Pridwin. This is known as the Caswinon. Many people were assuming this is the Pridwin because it, yeah, looks almost identical to the Pridwin. And frankly, that's not that crazy. The Pridwin was built on the East Coast, so it doesn't seem all that crazy for the West Coastern Brotherhood of Steel to see the success of the Pridwin and then build their own version. And assuming they use the same design, yeah, it probably would look pretty similar. The last time we see the Brotherhood of Steel on the West Coast, they are at war with the NCR. Things are left off as of 2281 at the end of Fallout New Vegas. But this show is taking place a full 15 years after that. And clearly here, instead of being forced into hiding, it really looks like the Brotherhood of Steel is prospering. So perhaps the off-screen war between the Brotherhood of Steel and the NCR is resolved, and maybe even the Brotherhood won based off how well they seem to be doing. The article mentions some of the other actors that will be in this show. They're going to have some interesting roles, like a gang or raider leader, Lucy's inquisitive brother, and the enigmatic researcher named Wilzig. But of course, the third lead character and main character of this show is Walton Goggins, who is also going to be known as the Ghoul. So yes, he is a ghoul named the Ghoul. And his character is described as a gruesomely scarred rough rider who has a code of honor, but also a ruthless streak. The Ghoul has been alive for hundreds of years, and as a result, he is a great survivor. It described how throughout the show, we're going to get flashbacks to his human days, where he was a husband and a father named Cooper Howard, which of course is explicit confirmation that we are getting pre-war scenes in the Fallout TV show. And from these three characters, I think you could see how the first episode or first couple of episodes will unfold. Two less than capable adventurers with Lucy and Maximus go out into the waste on their own for the first time, likely finding each other or getting into trouble before the veteran survivor with the the ghoul comes in later to truly show them the way and guide them on their mission. Maybe Lucy and Maximus even get the ghoul out of a sticky situation at first to develop their friendship. And over time, the dark past of the ghoul will gradually unveil itself via what he says and of course flashbacks. Visually, they actually describe how Walton Goggins had the ghoul effects from the game turned down for his character. They mentioned wanting to be able to see the famous actor's face. With Jonathan Nolan saying, I need to be able to see Walton and his performance. He needs to look like a ghoul from the game, and he needs to kind of be hot. But in the show, there will be an explanation as to why this ghoul looks a bit less like a ghoul compared to the rest. The core plot of the show is how many are chasing an artifact that has the potential to radically change the power dynamic in this world. So a fairly generic post-apocalyptic side sci-fi plot, and we get a brief look at Philly here in one of the final images. This is not Philadelphia, but a waster town outside of LA. That is the remnants of LA you can see in the background. We have some other leaked images of Philly with its crate wall, and this seems to be further confirmation that Lucy is the girl escaping the vault as they have the same backpack. And across their journey, these characters will have to do some dark things. One of the things we're trying to gently sidestep here is that kind of binary thinking, like they're the good guys or the bad guys. Wherever the good guys and the bad guys were, they destroyed the whole world, so now we're in a much more gray area. We get to talk about that in a wonderful speculative fiction way. I think we're all looking at the world and going, God, things seem to be heading in a very, very frightening direction. And even Todd Howard comments on the work as he is the executive producer on the show. And he mentions how we had lots of conversations over the style of humor, the level of violence, the style of violence. Look, Fallout can be very dramatic and dark and post-apocalyptic, but you need to weave in a little bit of a wink. I think they threaded that needle really, really well on the TV show. So it'll have that familiar Fallout dark humor of the games, and Todd confirms that the show is going to be canon and a part of the lore. I have seen some concerns about how much the show looks exactly like the games, like from the screenshots that does literally look like Fallout 4 in real life. But Todd Howard says he is envious of some of the TV show's interpretations and additions. I sort of looked at it like, ah, why didn't we do that? That. So to some degree, the show will be carving out its own path or have its own take on certain things. And one example of that may just be here. We have our main character, Lucy, along with one of the creators of the show with Jonathan Nolan. But Lucy seems to be holding some kind of new or distinct weapon. It almost looks like a sawed-off shotgun from New Vegas or even a Silence 22 SMG from New Vegas, but neither quite match. And if anything, I wouldn't be shocked if this is some kind of special gyro round weapon created specifically for the show. Lucy has what almost looks like some kind of 
special ammo type on her belt, and those cartridges look like they would fit perfectly in the cylindrical portion at the back of this gun. And just the concept of new Fallout weapons being introduced via the TV show, then modders creating them for the game so we could use them is so incredibly fun. And at least one of those things will be the seemingly vast interaction of factions that we haven't seen in a Fallout game in a long time. But it seems like the Fallout TV show will be carving out its own spot by doing things later. It's a full 15 years after the events of Fallout New Vegas, and where a good chunk of the West Coast lore drops off in the Fallout universe. So they have this nice 15 year buffer for things to be different, changed, or even sometimes the same. From the leaked set photos, we have seen almost all of the major Fallout factions will be in this show. Of course, the Brotherhood of Steel, as we can see here, but seemingly the Brotherhood of Steel have gained significantly more power since the events of New Vegas, but an NCR flag was also spotted in some of the vaults, and it almost looks like the Enclave could be seen interacting with some vault scientists. This could be a flashback or just a different part of the country, but maybe the Enclave also made a comeback. The Enclave as of New Vegas was largely just remnants on the West Coast, but here they seem to have a bit more power. The show, of course, is taking place in and around Los Angeles, which is largely controlled by the NCR 15 years earlier. So perhaps we start to see their loss of power or the Empire starting to crumble. And I really do like their choice to have these main characters split up. It seems like we'll get several different perspectives as we're introduced into this world, and for some people, their first introduction to the Fallout world. But if you are thirsty for more after seeing these pictures, don't fret. The Fallout TV show has a panel at CCXP on December 2nd, and that seems like the perfect time to drop a trailer. Several of the stills we could see from this article are actually stills as a part of a larger teaser trailer that was shown at Gamescom. Unfortunately, this has never been publicly posted, it's just been shown behind closed doors then, so perhaps later this week we finally get that trailer, or maybe even an extended look at the show. But until that, check out this video, because Skyrim is probably getting an update later this week, and you definitely need to know about it.